Hello. Today is Thursday the 22nd of February. How are we almost at the end of February already? I don't know. This, this year is absolutely flying by. My name's Jan and I'd like to welcome you to the Faithful Sheep Crafts podcast. Um, thank you for, if you've watched me before and you've come back, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, then it's lovely to see you and I hope you want to come back again. Um, I, if you can hear footprints, okay, we've got a little Patterdale um, across Bedlington Terrier um, called Max and there's no one else at home at the moment. And I know if I shut the door, the, oh my words, already, if I shut the door to the craft room that he's going to be scratching at the door. So if you hear a little pitter patter of feet, it's just Max coming to see what's going on. So I live in the um, south of England in the East Sussex with my husband and my youngest son and our dog Max and I've also a mum to an older boy as well who's left home and got kids so I'm a nanny times two and this is where I like to share about my crafting my knitting predominantly my knitting um, but also I do do cross stitch and sewing and other things as well Having said that, the, the sewing and cross stitch has kind of gone a bit by the wayside really the last probably year or so. Um, I think I said last time I was trying to sort my craft from that. I'm very nearly there. Um, so mostly what I've done in the last two weeks has been knitting, but I'm really hoping sort of over the next sort of few months or so I can catch up and get some projects finished off that are more cross stitch and sewing. So what I'm wearing, I have finished my Yume sweater. Who <laughs> it's by Isabel Kramer it did knit up quite quickly but I found the um the yarn that I used I don't know why it was lovely to use but I just found it a bit hard on my hands um it's a sport weight but I think it's probably leaning towards more of a DK and my sweet spot with knitting is is sort of fingering weight really and, and smaller needles um it's a lovely pattern to do it's just this really simple sort of eyelet yoke pattern it's knit top down um, once I did this bit, that was lovely. I really enjoyed the top bit, but it was the rest of it. I just found it a bit of a slog. It's the second time I've knitted it and I love it. Um, I'm pleased with the fit. I will stand up in a minute to show you sort of the rest of it. This is the first time I've worn it. I have blocked it and um, it's just a teeny tiny bit scratchy still. It's okay. I'm getting used to it. I've only put it on about 10 minutes before I started this. So I think I will get used to it. But I think it's one of those ones that probably it might be sensible to wear with a long sleeve t-shirt underneath. So I knitted it to pattern. I did use the needles that um, Isabel says to use. Quite often when I'm knitting projects, I tend to find I need to go down needle size, but I wanted to not mess around with this one too much. Um, I think I did the fifth size in the pattern um, and I knitted it in this yarn, which is blacker brushwork. It's a sport weight and it is 80% pure new wool, 20% alpaca which surprises me because it's not that soft so i think probably if the alpaca wasn't in it at all it would be very scratchy um the colorway it says 12th birthday brushwork on the um label so i'm thinking that that's the colorway name it's a little bit confusing it's a woolen spun yarn and it was gifted to me very kindly by my friend nikki who is nikki winterton of the sheepish podcast and he said she uh what was it sheep and cheerful but no it's changed the sheepish sheep oh dear come on jan <laughs> the sheepish podcast so nikki kindly gifted me this yarn when she was having a d stash and i've kind of had it for probably mm, it's probably almost a year and couldn't really decide what to do with it but i wanted to make a garment and i think it's going to be one of those things it's like a sweatshirty sort of feel to it which is exactly what i wanted it's lovely and warm um so it's going to be good to sort of wear on those days where we don't really want to put heating on um, and also part of my work is involved um, involves working on a farm and it does get quite chilly. So I'm really pleased with how it's come out. Probably doesn't look so good with a black and white stripy t-shirt underneath. But I've just not long come home from work and I got wet. Well, I'm not so wet today as I did yesterday. I got soaked yesterday, but I just wanted to get some, some dry clothes on. So excuse the scrape back hair. Um, it's just yeah i washed it yesterday and probably got soaking wet afterwards so i've just put my hair up and i'll deal with it later so if i stand up so you can see the whole jumper and try not to knock anything over <laughs> so it's got quite a sweatshirty feel to it i like this um detail down the side here tippy toes nice length it, it falls to sort of just just below my hip i think um, i'm really pleased with the fit and i think 
the last one I did, I've got a feeling I did a size too big. I knitted a short sleeve version. And I don't really wear it very much. And I'm actually contemplating with sometimes I think if you've got something you don't want to wear, it's actually worth taking it back and re-knitting the size. So I might redo that other one. I'm not sure. Would I knit the pattern again? Yeah, I probably would. Um, but I think I would probably try it in a four ply next time um just to see how that comes out really it'd probably be a good like drapey one i don't know if i can't remember if um drops do any of sort of like a four ply cotton viscose type thing but i think it would be a good one to do short sleeve just like a tee so yeah pro possibly we'll make another one but not gonna say for definite <laughs> the second thing i finished is um the socks for my sister's partner who has huge feet Excuse me, I'm just going to have to have a drink, otherwise I'm going to start coughing. Yeah, he's a lovely guy. It's his 50th birthday this year. Um, these sock blockers are not big enough to put his socks on, so they do look a bit sort of bunched up. And I haven't blocked them there, obviously, when I gift them to him. I'm I'm knitting him three pairs, um, so I will we'll, um, block all of them at the same time and then wrap them up for him. His birthday is the, I think it's the 31st of March. So, yeah, so I'm really pleased with these. So they did take a bit of a going through. They're the biggest socks I've ever made. Um, I had to do a 72 stitch cast on for him and I used a 2.5 millimetre needle. Um, and I think I, I my sock pattern that I use, my basic vanilla sock, is the one from um, Winwick Mum, which is a free pattern. And she's got some really beautiful patterns, you know, socks with pattern detail on them as well. So they're really clear and I don't really use the pattern anymore. I've got, I've got it in my head. I know what I need to do. And for each member of our family, um, I know whether I need to maybe have a few more stitches um, in the rib and then go down, a, you know, a few stitches or a bigger needle on the rib because they can't get them over there, sort of like over their head. I think it's if you've got a high instep, isn't it? I think it's a difficulty. Um, these ones were knitted in West Yorkshire spinners in the colourway Robin. Um, my sister's other half is a very keen um, burr botcher. Um, so she said, do they still make that bird yarn? <laughs> I said, yes, they do. So I've tried to pick things that he he would like to see. And I think Robin's are, you know, are something he quite likes. So, yeah, they're good. And then the I did a afterthought here, a true afterthought here. I find it really satisfying cutting into a sock. I don't know if that makes me a bit weird. Um, for myself, I tend to do heel fa flap and gusset and the same for hubby if I knit him socks and generally sort of frames and that as well. But I didn't want to disrupt the striping on this. Um, and I know that uh, Mark will really appreciate them. So I wanted to sort of take the time over them to, you know, make them a bit more special. Um, this contrast that I did for the heels and toes is West Yorkshire Spinners KM Pepper. That's the colour. So I'm really pleased I've got, at least he's got one pair of socks. Mel said to me he'd love a pair of hand knitted socks. So I've achieved that, but I do want to make him two more pairs. So the next thing, I've had a quite a good finishing off session, actually. Um, <coughs> excuse me. When I was sorting out some more stuff uh, last week, I think it was, um, I found a little cardigan that I'd finished, a baby cardigan. I just needed to sew the ends in, which is terrible, really. So sewed the ends in. This is blocked. It's really cute. <laughs> This is the newborn vertebrae, which I believe is a free pattern. Then I think there's a just one called vertebrae and then there's a mama vertebrae as well. And you have to pay for those. But I've made quite a few of these for people. I made two when Rosie, my little granddaughter, was born um, and um, they got used loads. They're, they were designed initially. They've got a very short, small front, as you can see. So you've got the raglan sleeve detail here. And this is the front here. So it's really small. It's only a few stitches for the fronts. And the idea is that it's when they're having skin to skin contact cuddles and um, that you pop this on them and then it'll back doesn't get cold. So um, it's knitted in. I think it was a King Cole baby yarn. I cannot remember what it is. I haven't got the ball band, haven't got any more, but it's definitely 100 percent acrylic and it's really soft. Um, I when I make baby knits, I don't knit them in fancy wool because I just want the mums to be able to just, you know, sort of pop them on the washing machine and then just hang them up to dry overnight. The person that this is going to um, is due. I don't think she's had it already with her sixth little person. So <laughs> I just thought it'd be really nice to give that to them. And I'm going to hopefully get something else knitted for them as well in a, you know, maybe a little bit bigger size. But that is a really nice pattern. If you want to have a go at making something for a baby, it's brilliant. And you can get it out of a hundred grams of acrylic as well. I think I've got one out of um, a hundred grams of hand dye before. I did make 
when Rosie was little, I did make two hand dyed because it was like my first grandchild and, you know, it was quite exciting. So, um, but I did, uh, they, I did, I, I tried them in the machine and washed them in the machine and they were fine, you know, so I just wouldn't put them in the tumble dryer because I don't want to kill them. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's another thing. That was an unexpected finish. So that's good. Um, the next thing I have is something that I knitted not last year the year before i think i finished it off january february last year um and i just needed to literally sew the ends in block it and pop the buttons on so there's a bit of a story behind this i started knitting this i think the year before the pandemic and i just kept going wrong on the it's a dark, it, the main color is quite a dark color and i just i think it was just concentration i was just really tired i was doing like um six night shifts in a row but they were kind of partial partial um sleeping nights so i could sleep between midnight and i think it was six in the morning but i had to be the rank right the rest of the time and i was driving back home and it was it was a good sort of 45 50 minute drive to get there and the same again back so by the time i got home and sort of put some washing on and stuff it was time to go back to work again so um i knitted it mostly while i was there um and then i just I ended up having to unpick it because it kept going wrong and then uh, not last year before I thought I've got to just pick this up and get it done it's silly because I love the pattern I really want the garment I've got the wool and I'm trying to be really mindful about using what I've got and sort of not waste so this is the finished object hope you could see that okay so this is the cockatoo bray 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 i think that's how you say it um by kate davies um and it was knitted all in jameson and smith which when you knit it is very woolly but this is the first thing that i've knitted with it and then blocked it's it's beautiful i can tell it's wool but it's really really softened up a lot so um I definitely want to knit more things in this. I showed you, I didn't think to show them in the flesh, but I showed you a picture of leg warmers that I've made from my boss, um, Joe at the farm. Um, and she says they're so warm. Um, and you know, she, she's wearing them every single day and there's no peeing or anything on them and she's, they're getting put through a lot. So, um, I definitely would use this yarn again. This bit here was really fun to do. Um, I'm quite, I showed this to my mum before I blocked it and it actually it kind of very nearly made me cry. My nan was a really prolific knitter and she knitted for years. When she when I was a little girl, I can remember her doing all the school jumpers for the local secondary school. She had a knitting machine on the dining table and I was probably about five, six maybe. And she used to let me sit on her lap. I put my hand on the handle of the knitting machine. She put her hand over top. She had the softest hands ever. Um, her other job was as a cook in a um, like a care home and I think it was probably because she used to wash up when they washing up gloves so her hands were really soft from the washing up liquid and she put her hand over top of mine and then we'd go backwards and forwards with the knitting machine and I wasn't allowed to use the ball winder but I was allowed to watch and I thought that was just the coolest thing ever so now I've got my own ball winder but my mum said you knit like Nan and my Nan's been gone 25 years now so um each time i had a well i had a baby i had my eldest son connor i lost my nan um just over a year after he was born and then when i had jack my gran my other gran um, my mum's mum um she passed away as well so i kind of was a bit like you know it's sad really every time i had a baby we lost someone but they my my nan obviously didn't get to see jack my youngest but my gran saw both of them and my gran and my nan were very influential in my crafting when i was little they would sit and spend time with me nan was very much the knitter and the baker my gran was the sewer the gardener crocheter um she let me the first time i used a sewing machine was her um singer hand crank machine and i had a rag doll kit given to me i think when i was six and i can remember going to stay there for um for a few days over the easter holidays and she helped me cut it all out and we basically made the rag doll over the few days and she was so patient you know and no this is how you, you're going to use the proper so i used the sharp scissors and everything she said you're going to use it because i'm going to teach you how to do it properly so yeah to be told that i knit like my nan is quite yeah it was lovely it did kind of make me a bit sad but i'm i'm glad i've carried it on and you know i used to do a lot of patchwork and quilting and stuff but as i said to my mum the other day 
my knitting is my thing definitely i get a lot more enjoyment i think out of it it's the fact that you can pick it up and put it down so really pleased with that cardigan didn't know which one to wear today um so i, I thought i'd go for this because i'm cold because i got cold at work this morning um i think i might wear the um cockatoo bray at the weekend and i'll tell you about that in a bit <laughs> so that's that one and the next one so the last two weeks i've been quite um a monogamous oh monogamous that's the word a monogamous knitter because i wanted to get some things finished off and i think the podcasting is good for me and the fact that i think actually i want to make sure i've always got something to show that's finished that might not always happen because you know life gets in the way doesn't it but i just thought it'd be really nice to to get some things finished and this last finished object was just oh, i loved every single stitch of this and it is my Stephen West shawl. It's the Fantastic shawl by Stephen West. Um, and it's massive. <laughs> Absolutely massive. So I think what I'm going to do is start at one end and work along. <laughs> okay. I'm hoping you can see the bottom. I loved every stitch of this. Um, I knit it on the needle size and the pattern, which I think was 3.7. Yes, 3.75, because I managed to break two of my Chowgu cables um, in the last couple of months, which is really irritating. And I found that um, the cable I had wasn't really big enough, so I ordered a fixed cable. And I looked at a few other Stephen West patterns I've got in my library, and that seems to be quite common in size for him. So I just thought it's worth me ordering a needle. I haven't ordered anything like that for such a long time. So um, the only thing was I've got this as a kit and I cannot remember the name of the company. It's a really lovely lady who I believe lives in Scotland um, and she's been at Unravel a few times and I feel really bad that I can't remember her name. And I've looked on the exhibitor list for this year. I've tried looking online. I think I came up with a company in America. It's not them. So I can't remember, remember who it was, but she was so lovely. I saw the sample knitted up and I was like, I really, really like that. Walked away because it was only like the second store we went to and I like to try to save a bit of money <laughs> to go right the way around and then decide what I really want to get. But I did go back to this and she had this sample knitted up and it was absolutely beautiful. But I have a feeling possibly I cut so she what she did was some some of them I had whole skeins and some I had 50 gram skeins so some were 100 grams some were 50 and I think I probably got a little bit muddled with the, the colours so I did take a picture do you think I could find it on my phone and I'd got a little bit where I'd started it and then obviously you know couldn't concentrate because I was doing a, a living job at the time so I put it away and I thought well that's obviously what I started with so kind of went with that but I think possibly I got it slightly wrong because either that or there's two size options in this shawl so you can knit the uh, smaller one or the larger one and I wanted to do the large because I wanted to use up as much wool as possible the only problem I had was when I got down to this chevron bit at the bottom here let me see if I can. So there should have been um, more of these stripes. And then the next problem, I thought, well, I'll do that because I know I've got enough for those. It's massive anyway. I, I think I said to the Zoom girls, I'm not quite sure what to do. So I thought, well, I'll just see, you know, just go on. And I think a couple of them said, you know, if you've only got a couple of chevrons, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't matter. The problem I then had was I didn't have enough of any of the colours to do the eye cord bind off. That doesn't go right round the shawl. You've got this beautiful rib detail all the way um, on the edge. And I have to say, I, I love that. It was easy to stretch out to block it. I didn't aggressively block it, but I did. I wet block it. And I did obviously put a pin on. I've got not um, like knitting blocking mats. I've got the... Oh, what are they call the children's play mats that I use because they're like way cheaper and do just the same job. So I managed to get them out um in our bedroom enough that because I can shut the stair the stair gate to stop mats getting in there, and I pinned all the points out. But what I had to do was I thought I've got I haven't got enough of any of the colours, and I thought it really needs to be something that's going to have a bit of a pop to it. So I looked and I'd got a ball of Jameson Smith in red, and I just thought. I showed it to my husband and he's not really doesn't have a lot of opinion with colours and stuff. But I said, do you think I'll get away with that? That's the red that was in the kit. And that is the Jameson and Smith. It's 
it's pretty close it's difficult to show you really but i absolutely love this i'm so pleased with it i haven't worn it yet because i wanted to show you here first so it's really warm um i've got a um kind of like a knee length um kind of like fitted at the top and then it flares out slightly really nice black uh, winter coat that i um, got i think about four or five years ago now um i needed a, a new coat desperately the other one was falling apart and when i saw this i thought oh that would go so nicely with my with my coat so yeah i'm really pleased with it mum and dad gifted me the yarn to get that so when they heard i was going to unravel it wasn't last year the year before i think um they just said oh well do you want some birthday money now um and in case you see anything you like and it was lovely because i was able to pick up a few things that i wouldn't have been able to get um so yeah this was a gift from them and i just when i got home from unravel i just gave it to my mum the next time i saw her and then she wrapped it up and yeah it was nice it was lovely to have it so um i'm really pleased with it really enjoyed knitting that i would absolutely knit another one of those it it was so good from the point of view that you start knitting and you do one bit and then it changes a different color a different pattern um i had to tweak it slightly this section here should have been purple with these bits and i just thought it's just not going to show up so i just changed it round a little bit which is again might be the reason why i kind of didn't quite have enough yarn to finish the chevrons but i love it i'm really happy with it so it's it's softened up a lot when i block things i don't have um I, years ago i had a bottle of soak i haven't replaced it um i think my sister was sorting out and she found some is it called children's farm it's children's like shampoo and um like body washes and stuff and she was sorting out and she found a bottle of that and my son my, sorry my son my nephew was 15 last week i think it was a week before so yeah he's not going to use that anymore so i thought well i don't mind using it for um i didn't want to use it for the grandchildren because i don't know how old it is and obviously i would imagine there comes a bit of a shelf life with them um, ingredients and things like that so I just put a little drop of that in um, with some lukewarm water in the sink in the bathroom and let it soak for a bit. The colour, oh my goodness. Um, I've never had anything pour out as much colour as that did. It was really scary. Like the first, when I put it in, within seconds, that the water was just completely black. And I just thought, oh, please don't let the red run into the grey. And I, I was in a bit of a state and I thought, oh, I'm going to be a bit upset if it does ruin it. But it's actually, I just kept doing it. And I think it, I got to the point where there's still a bit coming out, but nowhere near as much as there was the first time um but yeah i loved it i uh, i would use that yarn again it was really nice it made my nose a little bit itchy and it made my asthma a little bit but um i've recently changed my inhalers so i don't know whether it was that or whether it was a combination of switching over to the inhaler which thank goodness seems to be working so that's good but i know um i think it was davina of little work from crafts hi davina um she ha was knitting a like a vest we call them tank tops hit Oh, tank tops here in the UK well that's certainly what they were called when I was a kid my granddad used to wear ones that my nan had knitted and that was in woolly wool and she had to stop doing it because she said it, it upset her asthma so much um but I found since I've blocked this it doesn't seem to bother me so much so that's you know I'm really pleased with that um it was knitted in this Sna snailden snailden um that's really bad I can't remember it's made in the Faroe Islands. Um, it's 100% wool. Doesn't say what type of wool. Um, there's 100 grams is approximately 360 metres. And it says recommended needle gauge is 3 to 3.5. But obviously with a short, you tend to be a bit looser, don't you? So um, it's really nice though. I would use it again. Um, I haven't got very much left at all. I think I probably, there's a project that I'm making that I'll show you in a bit. And actually, the I think I've probably got enough red to do a little bit of something that I'm... Uh, you know another project that i've got on the needles but yeah i really really enjoyed that so i think don't be scared of stephen west shawls um they look really complicated but that man is a genius and he's most of his patterns or certainly a lot of them when he brings a new pattern out if there's a new technique in there he'll do a youtube video to explain it and he shows you and he'll show you english style i'm a thrower um and he also show you continental side um, style as well so don't be scared by them um if you just treat each bit as a little section obviously make sure you read the pattern the whole way through um, and just treat each section at a time and you'll you'll enjoy it it's good fun it is good fun i think this would be a good one to actually use up some scraps as well so i might have a look in my scrap box and see what i've got and you know i'm really tempted to make another one actually 
because it was good fun having said that i have got other patterns that i could choose um but yeah no it was good excuse me a minute <coughs> You're not going to believe this. I've just spotted a mistake. Look at that pesky stitch there. Well, it's not nothing's going to happen with that now. It's it's poetic license, isn't it? It's poetic license. I've just dropped my cardigan on the floor. Excuse me. So that is all the finished objects. And now what I'll do is show you what I'm making now. So I cast on a pair of another pair of socks for Mark, and. I think we, I was on Zoom and I was like, do you know what? It's not, I was trying not to cast sort of anything else on really. Um, I, I need to do a couple of bits for the kids, but I was. I thought I really want to do jump of myself or I couldn't decide what to do. And I thought, no, the socks aren't doing it. I need to cast something else on. So I've been seeing these pop up all over Instagram and I was sitting um, sorting some, through some paperwork at my desk and I looked up and I saw a box uh, on my shelf. I saw a ball of sir sir oh is it oh dear that's awful look up oh it's here sir dar jewel spun aaron and it's in the color way sunstone amber and he's sitting on my shelf and i'm looking thinking oh i know what i could make with that so yes i have i don't usually jump on the bandwagon but i absolutely have this time can you guess what this is <laughs> I cast on an emotional, sh oh, emotional support chicken, and it is by the Knitting Tree. And I have to say, it's really good fun. Um, it's a bit curled up because obviously it's yeah, it's not blocked or anything. So, um, it's excuse me, <coughs> it's such good fun to do. Um, so I'm using the jewel spun Aaron, and then I've got a massive ball of this grey which I'm not going to get out now. And I think that is a Serdar, no, Hayfield Aaron. I can't find the ball band at the moment. Um, but just to break the colour up, it suggests you use two colours. You could hold like a fingering and a DK together or a couple of fingering weights or something um, and use up scraps. I've seen a few people have done them with scraps, but I just looked, I thought, no, this looked chicken colour to me. So um, I've had to take it back twice partly because it was last night i was doing it when i was tired and i shouldn't have done i was just exhausted and i messed it up so it's there's a lot of short rows in it so if you haven't done short rows before it's a really good thing to have a go on um just make sure you read the pattern carefully is all i say i think they've adjusted the pattern slightly because i think there were a few little issues with it that people were having um but yeah i'm really enjoying it um knitting on straight needles look at that it's, can you see I think I must have sat on that at some point, but I can't remember the last time I knitted on straight needles. But I'm really enjoying that. Um, and I'm thinking I have got a tiny bit of red, I think, left of my um, Stephen West shawl. So I'm hoping that will be enough to do the, it's the comb, isn't it, on its head? And it's the wattle, I think, is under the chin. Um, but yeah, it's really, really cute. I haven't got a picture to show you because I'm filming on what I've just realised. I'm filming on my phone and... Um, I didn't print the pattern off. I've been reading it off my phone. So um, I'm hoping that next time I podcast, I'll have that finished. I'm a bit concerned, though, I have to say, because I think I know what's going to happen. I think a certain young lady called Rosie that comes to Nanny's house at least twice a week is going to decide that that's for her. So there's a chance I might have to make a second one. Um, but I did wonder about maybe making um, Rosie and Milo one for Easter. Because I've got some of the, I can't remember the colourway name, but it's like blues and purples. And I thought maybe I could do one for Rosie in the, the uh, what was it, the sun, sunstone amber and one for Milo in the sort of the purpley blue one. But I don't know. I'm not sure I want to knit masses of them, I have to say. So it might just be the one and I'll tell her she can't have it. She can cuddle it when she comes to Nanny's house. Um, what have I got next? Oh, the next thing is... I should have said this project bag is one that I made years ago. Um, I think it was probably around the time of the Jubilee or something. But yeah, I really like it. It's got a little big Ben on the zipper pull, which is quite cool. So I think I got that in Hobbycraft. There was a selection of them. I think it was a taxi and something else as well. So that's that one. And then this is one of my bags. This is it's a pattern. It's the Finch bucket. Um, I really like these. I need to make myself some more of these. I can't get in it though. 
Oh, that's the big ball of Aaron for the chicken. So that's that. Let's put that there out of the way. Um, these should really be in their own bag. I need to sort that because I cast. I wanted to make sure um, that I had what I call a pick up and go thing. So I like to try and make sure I always have a sock on the go. Um, so I've cast on another pair of socks for my sister's other half. And this is the one of the new range of West Yorkshire spinners. And it's the J. Um, I was going to pick up Starling for him, but there was so much purple in it. And I remembered something that I didn't say last time. Um, there was someone I knew was knitting, or someone I was talking to said her friend was knitting with it. And the purple was coming off on her hands. And that's really unusual. I've never had that happen with Yorkshire spinners. And when I looked at the Starling, I just thought, oh, it looks really dark. Um, so I went for the J. And then I think, yeah, the other one I got was uh, wood, Green Woodpecker. So this is really nice. I like how this is knitting up. I like the fact that some of them you just get like the grey flecks, but this has got like a turquoisey fleck. Um, and, you know, here and then obviously the dark, like a dark grey black. But um, it's it's almost right colour wise. Um, it's the light's really grim. It's chucking it down with rain here. We got we couldn't go on to the veg patch today where I work on a Thursday because it was just like a paddling pool. So we'd have, we'd have needed to swim back to, <laughs> to the cars to go home. Um, so, yeah, I've had to put the overlaid light on. So I apologise if the lighting isn't great. But this is, it's weird because when I was knitting it, I thought, oh, it looks like those stripes are the same because I was knitting it quite late at night. But that colour and that colour are actually slightly different. That is very slightly lilac-y. But it's pretty. I like this. This seems really soft, this one. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. It's still... You can still tell it's woolly, but it just seems a bit softer than usual. So I don't know whether they've tweaked their base at all. But again, 72 stitches. <laughs> and again, I think um, I think what I might do, because I only just had enough wool. So I did contrast heels and toes on the other pair, the Robin ones. And I've got virtually nothing left. And I can usually get two pairs of socks out of West Yorkshire spinners if I do contrast heels, toes and cuffs. So it shows you how, you know, his feet are huge. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to have a lot left of this either. But I think I've got some grey. So what I'm planning to do with these is put grey. I think I probably will do the afterthought. Because I don't like it when it messes the striping up. I, it doesn't bother me, but it does when I'm gifting them to someone. I just think, yeah. So I think I'll put um, a grey contrast in with these. But, um yeah, hoping to get some working over those at the weekend, but I should talk more about that in a minute. And uh, the other thing, I think, like, yeah, last time I showed you a uh, sold up now that I found under a big pile of stuff on my desk when I was sorting out, and it was too short. So there's a bit of a story to this. I was on Zoom, and the lovely Sally that I'm hopefully going to get to meet on Saturday, I'm very excited. Um, said about you know yeah she, we were talking about making it longer that was it and I said I can't find the so I had knit the whole thing and I was just going to extend it but I've had to take it right back because um I suddenly realized I was knitting with a new skein and I thought oh, I haven't um I haven't alternated the the yarn um and it, it I took a photo and sent it to the Zoom group ladies on a little chat thing on Instagram. And I said, is it obvious? Because I thought it was. But, you know, sometimes when you look at something in different light, I thought, right, I'm going to show them. And I thought, I know they're going to be honest with me. And it was really obvious. And I tried, I wasn't going to take it right back. But the only thing is, is I found at the back where the colour work starts, what I was doing was carrying the yarn up when you do these little flea stitches here. And I noticed that either side of like the beginning of the round, there was the odd one where you were losing one of the colours. And I thought, you know what? This is hand dyed yarn. I got it from Claire and the lovely Claire and John at Bird Street. I think I'd bought the this colour. Uh, where is it? So this main colour here is Beaujolais. And I'd got, um, I think, four or five skeins of it from Unravel a couple of years back. Um, and I was going to knit a bit more, but then... They put this figgy, I think it was called, this colour, on. And I thought, oh, I really like that. Had a skein of undyed. So I bought this pinky colour. I cannot remember the name of that. And um, the figgy to go with it. Knit this and thought, do you know what? 
it doesn't matter that I've got skeins left over because there's enough there to do something else with. I make myself a nice shawl or something. And um, I could not find the pink, the pale pink, this colour, anywhere. And I thought, I don't understand it because I'm sure it was all in the same bag. I'd got all of the main colours still in a, a plastic bag. I keep my all my young and um, seal bags apart from acrylic. I don't do that. I couldn't find it anywhere. Absolutely anywhere. I turned all the bags that had everything off the shelf. So I went and put it all through my... Um, bags that have got yarn in and then I was sorting out some stuff the other day and I thought oh I wonder and um I've got um they're not the Calyx units they're up behind the camera there but they're the square you know like the little square box unit things and right on the top I've got a big really useful box it's got all my leftovers in so um like little tiny scraps I've got in a bag because I've got a couple of scrappy blankets on the go um but I've got anything sort of like that's over 10 grams is in this big box and I thought I wonder if the net is a pig to get to. So I managed to get it down without taking myself out. The last time I got it down, I nearly knocked myself out with it, but managed to get that down. And I took a few things out and there was the pink yarn and the remainder of the undyed skein. So I thought, brilliant, I can do it. So I just thought it's worth it. You know, obviously, um, as I've said before, I'm not in a position to be buying lots of hand dyed stuff now. And that's OK, because I'm still, you know, I'm I'm enjoying what I've got. And I'm grateful that I have got some still to use. This obviously is not a cheap garment to make, really. So I want to make sure it's right. I want to make sure that I'm going to wear it. And I think it was well worth me taking it back because of the fact that there were some of these one or two or both, you know, either the pink or the cream just wasn't obvious. Um yeah, so I took it right back to literally just under the where it splits for the sleeves here. Or oh, the sleeves, basically, it's just a few rounds of rib. You're not litting a sleeve as such. Um, but I think it's going to be worth it. A little bit disappointed because I was hoping to be able to wear this to unravel. Um, but I, there was no way I was going to get it done. So in the end, I thought I'd rather do it and enjoy it and not kind of stress knit it, if that makes sense. Because I think that will have a a bad effect on sort of like the gauge of it and everything and I oh you know I want it to look really nice um the other thing I was going to say was when I was doing it before I think I started to say it and got sidetracked but I was carrying the yarns up so the main colour I'm carrying up and alternating skeins but the pink and the cream I'm starting with them I'm knitting the row and I'm cutting it and then I'm doing the next colour and cutting it and I'm finding that that it's a little bit gappy at the back you know where you've got your beginning of round but if you just put it gently then it closes up and I, that's getting I'm getting a much better effect than I was before. So although it's a bit of a fact because there's going to be lots of ends to, to sew in, I don't mind that because I'd rather have a garment that I really like and I'm going to wear and it does the yarn justice, you know. So that's enough waffle about that, Jan. Um, but yeah, I think when I do this longer, I'm, I'm not going to make it really long, but I want it to be um, it was very cropped before which is because i have got quite a short top half i've got really long legs but a short top half um and you know quite a high waist so i think taking the extra time to do that um although it's a bit of a pain it's worth it so i don't mind you know it's okay i'd rather have something i'm you know going to use than not so just check my notes sorry um the last thing is something for rosie so my little granddaughter, I knit her, she's going to be four this year. Um, and I think it was when she was one, 18 months maybe, I knit her the Owlet sweater by Kate Davies. And she, she was wearing it the other day and it's kind of like up to here on her arms and it's like cropped and, but it's really stretched. And I just said, Rosie, I think really that jumper's too small for you now. She said, I know, Nanny. She says, I need a new one. I said, well, what sort of jump? I need another owl jumper, Nanny. So I said, oh, OK. She said, I need a blue owl jumper. I was like, OK, well, you know, I was typical. You know, it's Aaron. I haven't got any. Well, actually, it's chunky, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, I thought I haven't got any blue, you know, in stash. I'm going to have to buy some. But that's OK. I've, I mean, I'm not going to be buying masses of yarn this year. I've said I want to knit from stash. However, I will get for the kids because sometimes Amber's bought them. Rosie wears a lot of leggings um, because they're comfortable. She's quite a active little girl and they're comfortable for her to wear. And she'll say, oh, could you do me a this colour or could you do me a that colour? So Rosie asked for a blue owl jumper. But this time, Nanny, can you put owls on the eyes? And I said, well, do you, do you want owls? Yes, I do. I said, oh, OK. She said, why didn't you put them on the last one, Nanny? 
I said, well, because your mummy asked me not to. And she's hands on her hips like this. She says, well, it's not for her, this jumper is. It's for me like this. She knows her mind. She's great. So she is getting a, a blue outlet jumper. So I am using... Oh, dear. No, it's all right. I have got the ball band. Um, I'm knitting it in. It's... Hang on a second. Sorry. Oh, I'm all fingers and thumbs. it's deluxe signet aran which is 100 percent acrylic i haven't knit with signet before wasn't sure if i was going to love it it's actually okay this is actually quite soft and it is in the colorway <coughs> denim <laughs> so this is knit bottom up now there's a story to this too <laughs> which again teach me to do things when i'm really tired that's one thing i do find sort of with health issues that sometimes i think i should just stick to a sock because i don't it's like my brain just doesn't work properly um and i get confused about things so um i cast it on last weekend i think it was and i'm knitting it and i said to my husband sean i went sean he says who's that for is that for rosie he says is it from the, he's starting to learn the terms you know is it for knitted from the neck down and i said yeah and then you know we're talking and he said that's going to be huge jan and the one she's got has stretched so much but i mean to be honest it's been she's been roughed in rough and tumbling with her friends and stuff but she's quite little she's got taller but she's very petite she's just like i was um i think it was up until i was about seven or eight i was the same measurement all the way down <laughs> so it's quite difficult to get things like trousers and stuff to stay up on her but she's she's not wide across her shoulders so i cast it on and i thought it's just not going to be big enough so i thought right i'll undo it cast it back on but i went down two needle sizes and um, because it's one of those patterns where it says use this needle and then a below gauge needle why they don't just write but i suppose it's because you need to check your gauge i don't know but it's a below gauge needle so i went two sizes down and it said a five millimeter for the body in the pattern so i did a 4.5 to start with and then i went down to it's still massive and i just thought this is just going to fall off her shoulders and then when you do the increases in the yoke you know with the the pattern it's just not going to look right so um I sat there yesterday and I thought, so I'm reading the pattern. I thought, well, that's weird. It's got knit and till so many inches. I thought, well, where'd you put the owls in then? And then realised, silly Jan, that it's bottom up. And I completely forgot it was bottom up. I knitted the adult version for myself. It was probably one of the first, it was the first pattern I got on um, Ravelry, actually. So I knitted the owl for myself. And I've got a feeling the adult one was a free pattern. I don't know if it still is, but I think it was free at the time. Um, and I thought, how can you forget that? And then just, just basically what the, not, you know, the more of the story is read your patterns, isn't it? <laughs> read it before you do it. So I've recast it on. But what I've had to do is Rosie is going to be four this year. But she's so dinky. When I looked at the size for her age, it said to knit it in chunky. And I thought, I can't do that because the Aaron is hurting my hands. It's going to be even worse in chunky. Plus, I thought it's going to absolutely swamp her. So what I've done is I've cast on. I'm um, using I used four millimeter needles for the rib and I'm using five millimeter needles for the body. And then when I do the neckline, um, I'm using the numbers for the 18 to 24, but I'm doing the length of the body and the sleeves for the. Um, three to four because it's just going to be massive on her otherwise so the same we used to have my mum i was talking to my mum yesterday about it because mum and dad took us out for dinner which was really lovely and then they came and had a cup of tea afterwards and i should you know i showed her what i was doing and she said she's just like you my nan used to knit for me she used to knit all my school cardigans because then you did you just went and bought as long as a navy blue card and it was okay so i used to have hand knitted one because they were a bit warmer because i was really hard to believe but i was very very skinny when i was little really skinny um like ridiculously so um so i used to get really cold so my nan used to knit my school cardigans but she always had to make not the body longer she always had to knit the um the sleeve length longer so i thought i need to get round that really so that's why i say i'm doing the 18 to 24 month 
which is knitting Aaron. And then when it goes up after after two, um, it goes up to you use Chunky. But I thought, no, I'm going to do the Aaron. I think I've got plenty. If I haven't, it's a little shop up the town. I can always pop in and, and get another ball. And I think actually I think I bought one more ball than I needed anyway, just to be on the safe side. Um, but the lady said that she got I think she got some more out of the back of the shop. So it's it's not a problem. But yeah, I just it's weird because I think I'm going to find that when I knit for her that I'm going to have to really look at the measure. The trouble is she won't let you measure her around her chest. She says it is going to hurt her, which clearly it is. And we even measured Max the dog. She thought that was hilarious. We measured her brother. We measured dog called Jack and measured Nanny. Um, but she still wouldn't let me measure her. So I had to kind of stand behind her when she wasn't looking, doing something else and think, right, OK, she's about, you know, but she's tiny. So I think that's the only way I'm going to get round things for her is I'm going to have to maybe knit them in a smaller size, but increase the arm length um, and the body length so that they fit her. So that was a lot of waffle again. I'm really sorry, but it's not very exciting either. I haven't got I don't feel like anything's exciting to show you. Um, <laughs> but I got to that point where I kind of cast off everything apart from the exception of two scrappy blankets that I've got. Um, I'd I'd kind of cast everything off. So um, the yeah, so I desperately want to start another garment for myself, but I'm trying to be good, and I thought I need to make sure that I do Rosie this jumper because she's been so patient, bless her. Um, and yeah, I didn't need an emotional support chicken essentially, but I thought I just wanted to join in the fun really. So. Um, so that's all the works in progress from a knitting point of view. Um, last time um, I spoke to you, can you see her? She's just there. That's Luna Lapan. Now, I was hoping to get her dress made and her cardigan. Um, I need to block that and sew it up. And it's just not worked out that way. I had a cup. I've had a probably four or five not great days in the last two weeks where I've just not been able to sort of... Um, do much really other than literally go and do my few hour, few hours work if it's been a work day come home and and crash so i've not just not felt able to get my sewing machine and stuff out and i was also still sorting out my room and stuff so um i need to obviously finish that um and um yeah it'd be good to get that done because it's been hanging around for ages and while i was sorting out i did find something i thought actually do you know what there's not much more to do on that so i think i said to you i'm a cross stitcher as well but sort of the sewing and cross stitch kind of went by the wayside really um and when i was sorting out i found this lovely little cross stitch that doesn't need much more doing to it so it is it's called louise and henry and it is by little house needleworks um and it's a lady called diane williams that does those designs isn't it sweet it's really cute and literally all i've got left to do is just finish this here um so just yeah, there's a little bit there down between the o inside the o between the l and the o and then just it it's butt as rosie would say um and it's so nearly done so i i know why i didn't finish it it was because i ran out of the um the particular floss so some of these are done with um what they call speciality flosses and um it was it's called antique lace the one that the sheep is done out of and i think i need to look upstairs because i'm sure i found one and i put it i put it in with the other bag of threads so yeah i just need to get that finished off really so i think my goal is to get um i won't do so in the season because i'm too tired that needs to be when i've got um actually i know when i can do it um, I can do it on Monday because I have actually got a break from the kids. I love my grandchildren's bits, but I don't often get, I either work and have the kids or I've got the kids. So I don't get a whole day where I have to myself and next Monday I have. And I'm going to go and spend it with my friend Nikki. So I might take Luna Lapan's dress with me and uh, finish that there. And then the cross stitch I, is something I need to do when I'm not too tired because otherwise I get eye strain. Having said that, when I was doing cross stitch before i didn't have glasses all the time um and my prescription changed a lot in a year and when i went to get them tested like well you know it's too early i said i'm telling you i can't see properly and he was like you're right so i ended up having glasses all the time and glasses for close work so when i was trying to do it before i was trying to do it with like a magnifying glass so i need to um try doing it 
in the daylight i think with my glasses that i've got now and if if it's still not okay i've got one of those little clip magnifier things that i can put on but i actually prefer to stitch in hand um that i should have told you about the uh, fabric actually it's an even weave i have got some linen i did get some linen a few years back um i just can't get on with it i can't see it properly and i find personally the stitches just don't look even on it so i tend to either use um ada generally 16 count or 14 count or this um i think this is 28 count even weave and it's nice because you get sort of like the linley look you haven't got the obvious squares like you have with late with ada but it's my stitching and to be honest it, you know the ada doesn't bother me but i do like working on this but i tend to work in hand because i just find it's a bit easier for me if i use a, a frame or a hoop i tend to get cramp in my hand um, but that magnifier is saying about is quite good it does actually click on to a hoop so let's see i'm not sure what's going to happen with that so <laughs> um i met up as i said with my friend nikki this week and um it was really lovely but she's such she's a naughty lady so she came with um these two skeins of yarn so this one she had a d stash and i said oh i love that green would you you know could i have you know could i buy that please and then she said oh i won't pop it in the post she said oh well i'm sure we'll i'll keep it and she said, i'm sure we'll see you i'll see you soon um so she wouldn't let me pay for it which is i was a bit cross with her because i said that's not why i said could i have it she said no she said i want you to have it so i've got that lovely one and it is cafe young cafe creations which i think is american i think it's the mum yeah it's the mum of dragon hall yarns is it kirsten or Kristen? i think he's the daughter i can't remember the mum's name but it's the girls in the yarn cafe they've got a podcast i haven't watched that for ages actually i don't know if they're still doing that and then the other one she gave me is this one love these blues here into this green and this one is sock obsession yarns never heard of them and it's the colorway third time late oh third time lucky and he said third time lady third time lucky and there that is a 75 25 superwash merino nylon oh it's a lot of yardage on that 463 yards it's very soft really soft and that's a fingering weight four ply and then this one is actually 100 percent superwash merino wool so that will be not getting used in socks that will be used in a garment i think a shawl or a garment i have got something i really want to knit um it's a color work sweater it might possibly it needs a color like that in it and i think i might use it for that and um, that's 437 yards in 100 grams yeah so that's good that was that was unexpected and she also she's having a sort out she doesn't she said that she doesn't really use if she does like a self-striping yarn she knit one thing with it and then doesn't use the rest so she gave me these two little beautiful little cakes and this one here with the blue i'll hold it like that you can see the colors a bit more so they're both self-striping Oh, they're freckled whimsy. I've, I've never knitted with theirs before. That's pretty. I like their yarn label. That's lovely, that little bit of foliage there. Um, this one, oh, it says Zen. Yeah, do, it was the 2021 June Yarn of the Month colourway. And that's 75, 25 as well. So really good yardage in that as well. 460 yards in 100 grams. That's good, isn't it? But um, there should be, Nikki thinks there'll be enough for shorties in that. I think she said there was 45 grams. So if I do cuff, heel and toe and go straight off when I cast on for the cuff and knit the rib, go straight into the heel in a contrast colour, I should be able to get um, a pair of sock, shorty socks out for me, for myself there. Because um, I've got size 8 feet. <laughs> they're huge but if i view i've got them out of 45 grams before i might not necessarily be able to get the matching with the stripe starting at the same point in the run but um that doesn't bother me it's uh and then the other one this one which is really pretty it's got some lovely colors in it that um is that's it's a bit the label's a bit messed up but that's um desert vista yarn she does a lot of side striping oh pumpkin spice somebody i think she does a lot of um 
zombie arms, doesn't she? So, yeah, I haven't knitted with theirs before either. So, um, yeah, so it'll be good. Uh, they'll be good little um, projects to have. I think what I'll probably do is get try and get cuff cast on for one of those, actually. And they have a good little handbag project, aren't they? So, I think, yeah, that's everything to show you. So, the reason I wanted a sock project cast on and past the cuff was that I am going to unravel on Saturday. I'm really excited. I'm going with my lovely friends Jackie, Natasha, Lisa and her husband Tim. Um, I'm really looking forward to it this year. My friend Jackie didn't come last year and it wasn't quite the same for me without her. So I'm really glad she's coming this time. Um, I started going to unravel with her, I think it's probably six years ago. Um, so we went on our own a couple of times and then the girls from the Heathfield yarn shop came with us and then last year Jackie didn't come but the others went so I went with them but I yeah it was lovely but I miss my miss my friend Jackie so she's my my knitting bestie so yeah I'm really looking forward to that um I was planning to get some carders um because i knitted a few bits for people and they give me a little bit of money to say thank you for doing it so um there's a bit of a fight over that i don't like you know if i say i'm going to make if someone asks me to make something i'll you know sometimes i say well if you don't mind buying the wool but um i did a couple of things using leftovers and they insisted i took some money so i was going to put that towards some carders um because um my boss joe at the farm where i work she gave me a sheep fleece last year it's in a couple of bin bags and it's very grubby so it's got vegetation and goodness knows what in it um sean what the other day opened the bag what's in there and i went oh don't because you'll just get you know he was like oh that's disgusting and i thought yeah no it's not that disgusting it's just nature isn't it really so i need to wash that fleece um i just didn't get a chance to do it last year um i have got a little spinning wheel um i did have one um that i bought from my friend nikki um and then i was given a smaller wheel um from my one of my friends from church when her father-in-law passed away and they didn't want it um and they wanted someone to have it that would use it so at the same time i think a few weeks later davina from little work and crafts had said that she really wanted to get a spinning wheel and she was going to save up for one so i thought oh, what do i do and i thought i messaged her and i'd already said to my husband i think what i'll probably do is sell the one that um i'd had the one from nikki as a birthday present um, and it was nice because I knew it had come from her, you know, so it was special. So Sean had bought that for me. And we kind of, I have to be honest, we needed the money at the time. So um, what we did was I sold um, Nikki's wheel to Davina and she was chuffed a bit. So it was, it was good fun because we had to send it by courier. And um, my dad and I had to take it apart. <laughs> so I had to, I took like a photo at every single stage and then sent them all to Davina in, I think it was in Instagram as pictures. So she knew how to put it together. And I think her husband put it together. Um, you know, it didn't take him long at all. And it's been lovely to see her, like her spinning journey. You know, she's taught herself to spin on it and she's, you know, she's really enjoying it. I don't think she does it sort of like, all the, all the time but every now and then she'll get it out and have a go on it so it's nice to know that it you know although i sold it it went to a good home so i still i had a go at spinning on it and at the time unfortunately i'd hurt my back quite badly and i was still nursing in a in a nursing home and i just found it hurt too much so my back's a lot better now than it was um so i'm hoping that i can get to grips with spinning this year i have got some fiber that my mum and dad bought me it was 2020 so when the uh my birthday's at the end of may so the it was during like the lockdowns and stuff like that so once you're allowed to sort of go out and about a bit more um we went to collect it and i did have a go but as i say my back was really painful at the time and i just you know and also with work and stuff i was working a lot of extra hours because hubby was not allowed to work because he was a builder so it was a case of sort of having to do the hours to be able to pay the bills so didn't really get to grips with it but mum and dad had given me some fiber so what I'm going to do is try over the, I'm hoping over the next, uh, probably realistically, probably not this month. I'm hoping sort of Mar March, April time, um, I'll be able to have a proper go with it and see how I get on. But I wanted to get carding brushes because I hadn't got those. I've got a Niddy Noddy and I've got, I can't think what it's called. It's like a little metal hook thing that you put through to pull the, you know, the, the yarn through the hole when you're spinning um it's really uh, my brain's gone i can't remember all the the terms and i'd got a nudie noddy as well and that was with money i got for my sister at the same time as i got the kit for the shawl um i just thought you know i wasn't planning to i always said i'd love to get a fleece and process it all myself and then be able to spin it and knit a jumper it's something i've wanted to do for a long long time 
Um, so I thought, yeah, need the carders really. Um, I've been looking on Facebook Marketplace. I was promised some by um, an old friend and they kind of never materialised. So I thought I'm going to have to get some. And the ones that come up on Facebook, they're never local to us and a lot of people don't want to post them. Um, so I just thought, well, I'm just going to have to get some. And, you know, I thought, I, you know, that that's what I think I'll get when I go to Unravel. And then... Um, I was talking to the lovely Nikki and she went, Jan, I've got some carders, you can have them. So I haven't got to buy carders now. So yeah, I've got I have got a little bit of money to take to unravel with me. Um and I I know I'd said, you know, I don't really want to buy any yarn this year, but realistically, apart from buying the odd ball few balls of acrylic for the kids, I don't that's the only time I buy yarn now. I don't buy hand dyed the rest of the year um i think last year literally the only yarn i purchased was i say a bit of acrylic for the kids um i got a ball of swallow west yorkshire spinners and i can't remember the name of the blue it's a solid to go with it when i went on holiday last year we went to devon um and a couple of balls of jameson and smith but apart from that the only time i'd bought wool was at unravel and that was i bought enough for one garment from john and claire at bird street yarn um, which I'm hoping to cast on soon. I was kind of thinking, oh, should I de-stash it? And I thought, no, because I got that over a year ago. Things were different then, you know, finances were different. So I think I am going to, um, I'm going to wind that up soon. And it's just on the shelf. Sorry, I'm looking over there. But I'm thinking I'm probably going to make the spectre sweater with it. I hope you can't hear my tummy. It's really growling. <laughs> really hope you can't hear it um the the spectre sweater is by hohi locatelli and it's it's done as a fade but i did see it. i can't remember whether it was on instagram or you know when you go onto a um, ravel where you've got the headings along the top and you can put projects I, i've seen it knitted in one color and it was beautiful and i actually thought i really liked it i like the other version but i really like that one so that's what i'm thinking of using that yarn for i did get it that initially last year when i bought it was to make kohi locatelli's i think it's called long summer cardi and i was going to use two skeins of old number seven with that i'd already got to go with it and then i thought no i think i i don't want to do that i want to knit the jumper with it so i possibly might have that cast on next time i'm not sure um so yeah unravel i'm i'm not quite sure I, I always used to try and go with not a, a shopping list that sounds bad but what you know what am i looking for there is a jumper that i really really want to make and it's called swallowtail and it's it's really difficult to say i think it's knit sophacy or knit office not knit office and it's this beautiful butterfly here in the center with like a pattern you know going around the edge and you use black um a light color um i think it's cream in the on the pattern you know the photograph and the pattern it's cream so you've got a black color work you've got a little bit of color above and i think it's got a rib neckline i haven't printed the pattern off i'll try and do that for next time um and then you have a main color for the body but you have an also another color that i think is a little bit at the top and it goes kind of just under the color work yoke as well before you go into the main color it's beautiful it's really lovely i'm teet teetering on the brink of i've got undyed that's fine haven't got any black um hand dyed but i have blank yarn and i have black dye so i'm quite tempted to have a go at dyeing a skein of the black myself obviously making sure that i really make sure it's you know it's taken properly and it's not pouring out um i think i want to use this cactus um and it's difficult nikki put a picture on instagram and i really liked it but it's not until you see something in the flesh is it that you really get the the colors i love this and i'm thinking of dyeing up like a teal blue um to go with it so have the undyed dye skein of black and maybe like a teal blue to go with this what i'm thinking of doing is taking this to unravel with me and i think i only need two skeins it might be three i might be naughty and get the you know the the three skeins for the body but i'm not sure part of me kind of wants to dye it myself really um i don't want it to be like too too speckly if that makes sense because this has already got a bit of a speckle in it so 
I think sometimes it's too much going on, isn't it? And because you've got this beautiful um, colour work yoke, um, I'm just worried that if I do a speckly yarn for the body, it's going to take away from that colour yoke. So um, I hope that makes sense. So, yeah, so I don't really know what I'm going to buy. There is a chance. Um, it's probably unlikely, realistically, but there is a chance that I might not buy yarn. I might look for sort of like assess accessories. The, uh, the only thing I did think about was, um, I think they call them barber cords. I haven't got any of those. And certainly trying on things is a, quite a challenge. Um, I tend to find rather than the leaving the cords with the end things on, because I've had that where I've tried something on, I've put the end stoppers on, got a shawl to tighten them up and then one of them's popped off and then all the stitches come off. So I'm thinking I'm going to treat myself to some of the barber cords. Um, I think somebody said Ducky Darling's ones are really good. I don't know if they're going to be at Unravel. I need to check this. I think they might be. So, yeah, I think I probably will get some of those, but I'm kind of going with an open mind, really. I think sometimes when I go to Unravel, what I love is being able to see the colours. And I think that's, that excuse me, itchy nose. I think that's probably why I don't buy yarn online, really, um, because I like to see it and feel it. Um, and the colours are never 100% online to what they are in real life. I also love the interaction between shopping at someone's booth, seeing the person that's created that, and having that human contact. And I know it probably sounds really old fashioned, but I'm very much a one for, I try and support our local shops as much as we can. And we used to have a really lovely little Christian bookshop in the town, it's gone now. But if I needed anything like that, you know, I always used to try and go to them. And if they didn't have it, ask them to order it because I wanted to support them. They've gone now, unfortunately. So I do kind of have to, you know, books now is, is sometimes order stuff online, but I will try if I can and get from somebody locally in the town. Cause you know, we've lost a lot of our shops in the little town that we live in. and. Um, well I say little it's not as massive now they built so many new houses but I I really enjoy the face-to-face -face contact with people and it's the same in the supermarket I had a basket yesterday with about 12 items in and this lady said oh you don't need to stand there she said behind that lady you could go over there and I said no I'm quite happy where I am thank you and she kind of didn't like it and was a bit nasty really and I said no I'm fine thank you we we've got quite a small Asda and we know, I know them all by name, the staff on the checkout, and they're so lovely. You know, and I always, I go through the checkout and I always say, how are you? You know, how are you today? And they love that. And, you know, I just, I, I know it's really old fashioned and people, you know, some people are probably thinking something daft, you know, just go through the self-service, it's quicker. I just really like that interaction with people. And I think that's what I miss the most from nursing. Um... I must admit the last couple of weeks I've I've I have missed it. It's the I think whatever I did as a job, as long as it was with people, it would be okay. I just like the interaction with people. So I think for me going to be at a quilt show or a yarn show or something like that, I just like the physical thing, looking at the product, speaking to the person that's created it and handing the money over to them. I know it's really old fashioned and I know a lot of them, you know, make their money from online sales. But I think that's what I love about Unravel is meeting people, you know seeing the person behind the you know i've i've you know met claire and john from bird street yarn a couple of times they are so lovely they're such genuine people you know and it's just really nice to see them and i think they they look forward to seeing people as well and i i was watching um Botan botanical yarns i didn't realize they did a podcast i need to go back and watch some more of those and that came up with i think it was yesterday evening as a recommendation and there's Sophie and I are really sorry I can't remember the other lady's name and um she's gonna be there and I remember you know I didn't get anything from her stall last year but she was just so friendly and so chatty you know so it's just nice to meet those people isn't it and I thought I put firstly find please forgive me if there's any quilters out there we used to go to a quilting show <laughs> knitters are so much more polite and crochets are so much more polite I went to a, a local quilt show <laughs> 
my mum and dad always brought us up that you kind of kind to people you move out of the way and there's this lovely man pushing his wife around the whole of this show it wasn't huge in a, in a wheelchair and he would wait patiently until there was a gap at this you know the booth so she could get in and see so my mum said oh hang on jan tap me on the arm she said there's a wheelchair a lady a man's just trying to come through with his you know a lady in a wheelchair so i stepped to one side at which point these three women barged past and actually knocked me over onto this lady's table with all her stuff on and i was so embarrassed and just like i couldn't believe it you know and i was like i'm so sorry no she's like are you okay are you, are you sure you've not hurt yourself and she was so kind to me but it's just <laughs> and i can remember being stood looking at a quilt some of them made <laughs> these women were going oh i don't like oh that's shoddy oh i don't like this i don't like that <laughs> i think i was with my sister and i can't remember if it was her or me and we said well i made that and they went oh oh like this and kind of rushed off but they just i really so i love you know i love people but i find personally knitting shows are so much more enjoyable than quilting shows because it just seems to be a lot of elbowing and stuff you don't get that at unravel you really don't people are, are gem, you know always oh oh i like what you the best thing i think one of the best things about unravel is seeing people in their knitwear and there's a cafe that we used to go to that's quite nearby. I think we possibly might go there Saturday because I don't think it was open on the Sunday we went last year. But we loved it because we used to go and sit in there and you you know that everyone's going to unravel because they've all got these handed jumpers on. So I love the fact that you can say to people, I love your jumper. Oh, what pattern's that? You know, so it's just, a, it's just being with people, isn't it? And interacting. So I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'm not driving, uh, lovely Natasha's driving and I'm getting a lift to her house as well. So um, I love doing stuff like that, but I know full well that um, I'm going to be pretty wiped out on Sunday. So I think when I get home, I'm not going to be doing any knitting. It's just going to be crashing out, have something to eat and go to bed. But yeah, I am really looking forward to it. The only problem I have with Unravel is they're not massive rooms. There's a lot of perfume and aftershave. <laughs> And every time we've been at some point, I've been literally manhandled by one of my friends out. Right, like, let's get you out because my asthma is very much triggered by highly perfumed things, dust, chemicals like cleaning products and stuff like that. And we were looking in one of the rooms last year, quite a small room. And oh, I'm talking and all of a sudden I was like, oh. And I could just feel my lungs like they just all closed up. You know, I couldn't get my breath. I lost my voice. I got husky. I'm getting husky now. It's, it's, I think it's because I'm tired and, um, yeah, I've been at the farm today. So it got, it gets, my voice goes completely. <laughs> so invariably, at some point, I end up in a corridor somewhere having to use inhalers. But it's so worth it because I, I love the show. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We always take a punk pack lunch with us and we go and sit in the car and eat that. And it's really good fun. It's really good fun. So I'm sorry that's a bit waffly, but I'm really enjoying doing these podcasts again. I was really excited. I'm, I did think about maybe trying to do them weekly and I thought I don't really want to put myself under that much pressure at the moment. Um, but also, if I do them two weekly, there's quite a lot to talk about. So I think what I'm going to do moving forward is next week, because I'm going to unravel, I think I it depends. If I buy anything, then I will. if I don't, then I probably won't. But I'm thinking of doing an episode next Thursday just to show progress. I think possibly realistically I'll have got a couple of bits finished. So there'll be those to show you. And I'm definitely planning a few more casts on. So I think I probably will come back. But yeah, just more to maybe show you what I've, you know, got unravel and also... Um, yeah anything that i finished just to kind of break it up a bit because i think otherwise it's going to be finished objects stuff i've got unravel and it's just going to be too long um i'm at an hour and 13 minutes now so <laughs> it's a bit of a a long one but i'm really enjoying this um thank you so much to all the new subscribers i think i'm up to 443 now so um when i get to 500 i will do i'm not going to say the actual word i will do a gift away which hopefully won't trigger the bot things um whatever they are but um yeah so but 
if I don't, that's fine. I really appreciate the 443 people that have subscribed. And I know probably there's more people watching. Um, it's just lovely to have that interaction with people. Um, I've recently discovered Bell and Stitch, my friend Tony that's in the Zoom group I'm in. She said about her, Belinda is just so sweet. She's so lovely. Um, I've actually got a proper little something in the post to her. So I must, I must should have done it at the beginning of the week but it's been a bit of a crazy week so i must um sort that out but she's so lovely she does like a, vo a vlog style um so it's she's obviously loves cooking and she shows you you know things that she's cooking and stuff it's a bit mouth watering actually and she's got lovely emma bridgewater things and yeah she just it's a nice quiet peaceful um little vlog to watch and she's got the most gorgeous dog called bilbo so i think he's a cocker spaniel but he's he's really sweet um but yeah i've i've messaged her a few times and yeah go and go and have she's very she's quite shy um but she's making some beautiful things she's really pushing herself out of her comfort zone you know and i really enjoy watching watching her vlogs um i've just remembered i should have done this at the beginning i owe i want to apologize publicly to the wall and wishes girls so last last time I said about them and I called them Sharon and Tracy. And then I think I woke up at two o'clock the next in like the next morning. I thought I've done. I think I've done something. And I realised I thought I, so I had to go on Insta, uh, on YouTube <laughs> at two o'clock in the morning, put my headphones on to disturb my husband. I looked them up and I suddenly thought, I don't think it's Sha it's Sharon. And it's Kirsty. I was calling them Sharon and Tracy. So I messaged Kirsty and I said, I am so sorry. I owe you an apology. She just said, that's hilarious. She said, Tracy's sister is actually called Sharon. So, and they're, I think they're sister-in-laws, but I was really embarrassed. I thought, oh, I can't believe I've done that. So I'm really sorry, Kirsty, but I'm glad I gave you both a good laugh. So yeah, go and watch them. They've just released another podcast. And Ruth's done another podcast. She released that today. She's I didn't feel so bad casting on a few projects when I still had many Ruth and cast on. So I'm just trying to think if there's any others. Um, I've watched some of Soxy Nana Alice. Um, and there's Belinda of Belinda Baubles. Belinda's Baubles. And they're nice because I think I said before, the only one really that I watch regularly that's got a lot of subscribers is Ruth. Um, of Ruth loves to knit because she's just lovely she's just so sweet and they're such good fun I love seeing all of her you know her knits but I've been watching sort of more the the you know the the small podcasts really I think it's nice to support those um yeah so I'm gonna stop talking because you're probably sick of the sound of my voice now and yeah I need to think about what I'm gonna cook for dinner I've got mince in the fridge I just don't haven't decided what it's gonna be yet so usually my answer is what have we got for dinner I say mince surprise and they go oh that's nice have we had it before and I go no it's mince I just haven't decided the surprises I haven't decided what I'm gonna cook with it yet so yeah I'm not sure it's it's a really horrible day here it's true we've had torrential rain it's dark it's cold it's damp so just oh roll on the spring I can't wait. I can't wait. So, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all possibly next Thursday. I've just remembered, actually, I'm actually on a course on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week. So I'll have to see partly what time we finish and also how tired I'm going to be because I get really bad fatigue. So it might be that I'm too tired, but I'll see. I mean, hopefully I'll see you at Thursday. If any of you that are watching do go to Unravel and see me, please come and say hi, because it would be lovely to, you know, to put names to faces. But obviously I'm, you don't need to be shy. <laughs> um, It would be lovely to see you. So yeah, have a good um rest of the week. And uh, I'm going to say goodbye. Okay, take care. God bless. Bye.